Professor Sadu Lim, uh, I am a faculty member in the computer science department at UC Davis and I run the Expo Lab here in the computer science department. To talk about the Expo Lab vision, I would like to take a step back. So if you look at my lab, my students, my graduate students, my postdoc, over the last 10 years, the focus has been on transaction processing. And what is transaction processing? The moment you do sales on Amazon or Walmart, you do any kind of credit card transaction, that's when the question arises. How do I efficiently execute transaction? So in the last 10 years or so, my focus has been how do I look at the emerging and new hardware as a disruptive technology in order to reduce the cost of transactions. And that's a multi-billion dollar industry. And so we looked at different mechanisms in order to exploit the modern hardware to not only reduce the cost of execution of transaction, but also allow other type of applications, such as doing the transaction while we do analysis. Because it's not sufficient enough to just run transaction in an enterprise sufficient for day-to-day -day job, but it's not sufficient to actually have a long-term plan for the, for the enterprise. For that, you need analytics. So the question that we looked at, how do you do analytics and transaction in a unified way using uh, exploiting modern hardware? So looking at that paradigm change of hardware in order to open up new opportunities. So that has been sort of the traditional focus uh, of our research. But now, there is a new shift uh, again involved in terms of applications and the possibility. And this is what so, so, sort of goes around watch. And the idea is, can I try to make transaction more secure? And by making the transaction more secure is to bring that notion of accountability, integrity, to the way we process transactions. And the, the sort of the fundamental ideas in the blockchain is, what if we look at the way the society runs today, it's democratic and decentralized. That is the cornerstone of modern society. So how do we exploit this new paradigm of decentralization and democratization in transaction? And that's uh, what the whole idea of the blockchain sits on, and that's the way we provide secure transactions. And sort of give you a little bit more in terms of what it, in terms of what the blockchain itself and sort of a very basic term what it really means is that if you look at sort of traditional let's say banking, you have your traditional bank. Each bank, so every time you do a transaction, they have a ledger. So they write down in the ledger that the person X paid a certain amount of money to person Y, and now you have to trust a central entity to make sure that they keep the ledger up to date and accurate. So now the question is, in terms of in blockchain, what if we say every person in the society will have their own notebook, they have their own ledger, and everybody in their notebook write down that person X gave a certain amount of money to them. So now, as a society as a whole, in a democratic and a decentralized way, we can keep track of every transaction and we can ensure the integrity and the transparency of the transaction. So we no longer rely on a central entity. So we bring back the notion of a trust. We bring back the notion of decentralization. And it's all based on that democratic principle. And so myself and my team at UC Davis as part of Expo Lab, so our effort is to study sort of the basic fundamental problem of how do you bring decentralized and democratic computational model uh, into a transaction process. When you look at UC Davis and in general all campuses across the US, the one major thing is there are not any blockchain courses as this is a very new area. So one thing that I have personally done in the graduate level, we have been developing blockchain courses for graduate courses. But at the undergrad level, simply right now we don't have uh, uh, that education in place. So what I have been doing is sort of a grassroots movement, sort of empowering and enabling undergraduate students to create a, a multidisciplinary club, not just limited to computer science, but from civil engineering, statistics, all the fields across campus sort of coming together and together allowing them to even create a curriculum around blockchain. And so it's, it's 
totally independently run by the student and I basically serve as an advisor to them in order to understand what interesting technology about blockchain and allow them to create a project that is tailored to their own field. So what I see as the future of the blockchain maybe is goes back to my philosophy of teaching and education. It is to foster creativity for our students. As a matter of undergraduate or is graduate. So what I wish to do and I was actively working on is to gather the different projects that the undergraduate student doing in blockchain and DBS and really bringing it into a more research form that will allow them to tap into their creativity. So taking them from small undergraduate project into potentially a large scale research project. And as part of that, in order to facilitate uh, this transition, uh, we are also open sourcing our uh, blockchain fabric, which is called Resilient DB. Uh, so Expo Lab will be releasing this blockchain fabric, and this will be available not only to undergraduate students here in Davis, but and elsewhere as well too. So again, the key question is to be able to tap into the student creativity and allow them to graduate their project and be able to deploy and test and evaluate them on a much larger scale.